Hello and welcome back to Indie Rebel VFX, Hollywood effects without a Hollywood budget. I'm your instructor, Chris Temple, and today we're going to talk about rig removal. Now this technique that I'm going to show you today builds on what we learned in the last chapter about replacing the screen on your phones using the planar tracker. We can actually use that same corner pin data that we generate to take out entire objects from our scenes, and that's what we're going to do today. So let me show you how this works. All right, we're already set up with our usual log to linear conversion settings. Stick the viewer off to the side, as is our custom, and let's take a look at what we're going to be working with today. So we've got Ruby booking it to the window, and she's starting to push herself out to it. Now, if you recall, in the actual short film, this window leads out onto a roof. However, the location that we had to shoot this in, that was kind of a, had the rundown, unfinished interior, makes it have that kind of apocalyptic vibe. Uh, this is, as you can see, on the ground floor, because here's a front door right here into this house that's under construction. So what we want to do in order to make the shot work and not make people think about this too much is we are going to paint out the door. So this is essentially going to be rig removal and we're going to use a concept uh, very similar to the corner pin effect that we used for tracking on a cell phone screen. Only now we're going to do the same thing to this wall and there is a difference in the way this effect is executed. So let's go ahead and get going with this. So I'm going to go to the very last frame because it's where most of the door is actually exposed and we're going to write that frame out to disk. So I'm going to hit W. All right, and I'm going to save this in my raw footage, Ruby, VFX, plates, and this is a door remove. We're going to call this clean plate. And yes, I'm going to replace the one I already have from when I tried this once before. And let's go ahead and come in here and save this as a PNG, which it is. And we want to make sure that we only render the last frame. So I'm going to set my frame range to manual. And I'm going to render frame 35 to frame 35. When you're done with that, just hit render. And it tells us that's done. And now we can fire up Photoshop and continue the shot. Now there is a feature inside of Natron called Roto Paint that allows you to paint on individual frames and actually do the cloning that I'm going to be doing in Photoshop. However, I've just been doing it this way for so many years, old habits are hard to break. So just keep in mind that the things that I show you in this course are by no means the only way to do it. They are just simply one way to do things. And ultimately, at the end of the day, as long as you get the same effect, that is what's most important. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my shot. And it's stored on my hard drive. And do, 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 door remove, clean plate. There we go. Open that. Now in this case, as we can see, doing that with a log to linear conversion made this almost too dark to really see what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to export a plate from the uh, log footage and then we'll have to do a log to lend to that as well to make everything match. So let's go and close this out and bounce back to Natron. And just real quickly, we're going to take this from the log to linear up to our plate and render. Okay, it's done. Go back to Photoshop and let's open that up. So I want to show you guys that sometimes it's not good to export your plate converted because Photoshop does a pretty good job of applying its own conversion here to it. So what we're going to do is just come up to the clone stamp tool and I'm going to press alt to choose an area over here and we just want to go ahead and start painting this out. Now you can see I've got a lot of feather on and so it ruins my edge there. So let's go ahead and undo that, come up to our brush settings and we'll turn the size of this way down and that should help quite a bit. We'll also turn the hardness up about 50%. Okay, let's see where this gets us. Okay, that's better. Don't worry about the seam, we'll fix that here in just a moment. Paint out the thing on the wall there. Paint that out there. And coming down here, we wanna make sure we get a little bit behind these boxes. If you look at these walls, these walls are all patchy and filled with stucco and plaster and such. And so it's okay if our wall looks the same. So we're just trying to get a nice, smooth, kind of patched look to the whole thing. A little too much there with the window. So we'll paint that down a little too much again. Come up. And as long as this looks like the ceiling and looks like it does over here, no one's even going to notice. I guarantee it. 
Alright. Now what I might do is come over here and grab my spot healing brush. And come and just see if I can kind of fix some of these edges a little bit and blend them a little bit more. There we go. Because while it is good to have some hard edges when we're doing this effect, a lot of times the smoother the seam, the better. I especially want to do where my patches meet the main wall. Really make sure those get smoothed out. Get rid of that right there. There we go. And so this wall now looks almost the same as this wall here. It looks the same as what we've got up here on the ceiling. So we'll call that good and press Control S to save and bounce back to Natron. Go back to the node graph. All right, let's go ahead and read in that clean plate. Here it is. And there it goes. And if I bounce between the two, you can see the door and that light switch are now perfectly taken out of the shot. Let's go ahead and copy our log to Lin and paste it over here. We're going to run our, our patch through that. Very good. And now let's go over to our main plate and track the shot. Once again, we're going to be doing a planar track on this, and uh, but we're going to be applying it in a way differently than what we previously have done. So let's go ahead and press tab, type in tracker. Okay. Uh, by the way, we don't need this right note anymore. We can delete that. And let's go ahead and start adding points in the tracker. Remember, it takes at least four on the same surface in order to pull this off, okay? Now, I know that ultimately some of these tracks are gonna go off screen this way. So it's okay if we wanna track one like right over here where the corner of the door is to start with. We can do that, but we wanna make sure we get more over here on this surface and we can use this window to really help us out with it. So I'm gonna come in here. I wanna scale this track point up a bit like that maybe. Let's go and add another one. This one we're going to put down here on the light switch. And we're just going to scale this up as well and track that whole area there. Okay, and let's go ahead and hit these corners and we'll hit this one and probably up there too. So anywhere there's a lot of contrast makes a great track point. And in this case, the more the merrier. Okay. We also want to be cognizant of the fact that Ruby is going to be running out of the shot. So I don't want to put anything over here where she's going to risk blocking it. I want to make sure that these points are going to be visible most of the time. And it's just going to make for a better and easier track that way. So there's that. And I think we can stick one more over here in this corner. Right there. So again, we're using these high contrast areas. I'm gonna go just for the heck of it, stick one up here in the corner. No, not high contrast enough. Maybe this broom handle right there. I don't know if this will work, but we'll try it and see. All right, let's zoom out a little bit so we can see our shot. I need to select all my trackers. So scroll down, press hold shift, do that. And since we're at the last frame, we're simply going to track backwards. All right, now looking at this here, I had a jump with this one. So I'm actually going to delete track point eight. So I'll come in here to eight, and we're gonna remove that one. We're not gonna use that. But let's take the rest of these here and see if we can solve for a decent corner pin. I'm gonna go again back to frame 35, our last frame in the shot. Go to transform. Motion type is still match move, but now we set it to a corner pin, set our reference frame to the current frame. That all splays out nice. And let's just see what happens here. Oh, that's going to track in beautifully. Look at that. That is great. That is most excellent. I like how that looks. Cool. So all that's left to do now is to come down here and export a track for that, a corner pin track. Put that over here underneath our patch. All right. Now what we can do is go ahead and connect this up straight up to there. And we're gonna merge this on top of this. Okay, and let's just go ahead and see what we've got here and make sure that this tracks into the shot nicely. And it does, it tracks in very well. So what we need to do now is just go ahead and add a small roto just around the area that we wanna keep. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here by pressing O for roto. 
And then what I'm going to try to do is try to follow the seam of the ceiling here to start with. And then just bring it straight down through here and then over and then down behind the box like that. Now, once we've done this with the roto, if we just go ahead and try to run this into the mask here, that works great on this end frame. But you can see by the time we get to here, it doesn't work out so hot because the roto is not tracking with the shot. So how can we fix that? Well, one of the ways I like to do it is to actually build up an alpha channel here and then merge that on top. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to disconnect this, move this over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up above my corner pin where the log to linear is, add a merge node. Okay. I'm now going to go ahead and hook my mask into that roto. Now let's see what we've got. Check that out. You can see how that tracks into the shot pretty good. The only thing we have left to do now is really go and put these boxes back on top of our patch, and I think we'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and roto out the boxes, and we can use actually very similar tracking data to make this work. Now, I could, if I wanted to, probably go through and, and use an auto track, but given how short this is going to be on frame for or on screen for, I think we'll just go ahead and hand track this. So we'll just go ahead and do kind of a nice thing there with the boxes. Like that. All right, now we can go ahead and keyframe it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way to the end here, or the beginning, I should say. Select our masks. And then I want to go ahead and add them on. Let's just go ahead. It's like it's added like that. Go ahead and bring some of these down here. Bring down that point, that point. About like that. Okay, so far so good. And all we're doing is just keyframing. My biggest concern is this edge right here, because that's really where that mask is going to be blocked out from. And it looks like we need to fix it a little bit through here, too. Come up just a bit. All right, with that roto done, we can now go ahead and isolate some of these elements and merge it back into the, the shot down the road here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead, and this is the way I like to do it. There are different ways, but I like doing it this way because it gives me more control over my image and what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and add a merge down here. I'm going to run my B straight up into the pipe I've been working on, and I'm going to take my A and stick it all the way back up here to my log to linear, okay? Just like that. I want to go and move this to the side, press control so I can get my dot node out of it, and line that back up. Let's go ahead and view this one down here. And then hook our mask of this bottom merge into our roto. And let's view it. Now you can see, looking at this here, the box cuts into the mask of the door cuts into the mask of the patch. So if we just play through this, you can see that the plaster on the wall stays in place. The box moves independently from it on its own. And it's just a real easy way to go ahead and paint out the door. And now when people are watching this, no one's going to be the wiser that there was ever a door there. All they're just seeing is Ruby book it towards the window. And then the very next shot is her coming out on the roof. And again, the shot's only 35 frames long. So this doesn't have to be completely pixel perfect. All we're trying to do is just get it close and try to hide the fact that there was a door here in the very beginning. So now if we go to the end, there's with the door and without the door. We painted it out just like that. All right, go ahead and uh, give it a go yourself. See what you can do with the, the corner pin tracker. And remember this time we're not having to offset a corner pin because we're actually trying to use a full on plate so that's the beauty of it. When you're doing planar tracking with an entire image surface to start with, like we were, all you need is the corner pin. You don't need to offset it first like you do on those screen replacements. All right, and then we just come back in here and kind of clean this up a little bit, and we're all set. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I hope now you have a better understanding of planar tracking and now uh, how that can help drive a corner pin to even remove rigs and unwanted elements from your shot.